I will invite Farha, uh, Farzana Meru, uh, uh, aka the board member. Thank you, Jalal. Yalimida, everybody. Um, it's, um, it's great to see so many of you uh, here for this webinar. We're really, really very excited. And what I want to do is to just start by giving you a little bit of an idea as to why we on the education board um, are putting some emphasis on the STEM side of things. So as part of our work on the education board, we've been doing a lot of uh, um, sort of background work on trying to understand the, the skills that are going to be really important uh, in the world of work in the, in the future. And by the future, I'm talking about sort of 10, 20 years down the line. And what we've been doing is to look at expert reports to try and, um, to try and uh, figure this out. And what, it, what is extremely, extremely clear from these reports is that there are certain skills that are going to be incredibly important. And these are things like critical thinking skills, analytical skills, problem solving skills, um, research skills, um, and technological skills is gonna, is gonna be a huge, huge part of uh, the future world of work. Um, in fact, we're already seeing signs that it is important right now. And so, and many of these skills really can be developed by starting to get exposure to STEM activities. And that is why we put a lot of emphasis on, on, the, on the STEM uh, activities that we do on the board. Um, we can see even now, actually, even during this um, coronavirus period, that actually there's a huge, huge dependence on uh, these kind of skills. You know, we're hugely reliant on technology. We're trying to develop, uh, as, as, a, as a worldwide population, we're trying to develop vaccines, we're developing um, new um, structures and technological advances to really help with the with the current situation and so for us to really sort of give our children um, a bit of a leg up in the future what we really want to do is get them exposed to STEM subjects from a young age to spark that interest to 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 really um, get them to, to think about how they might actually develop um, solutions uh, in the future, whether or not they directly go into um, uh, one of the STEM subjects that they're studying at school, for example, or not, but just so that they can actually use those skills that they develop to actually uh, make a difference um, and help them have a leg up in the, in, uh, the working world in the future. So uh, with that, I think I will, um, I will stop right there because we've got a couple of wonderful uh, panelists that I think Jalal is going to introduce um, and he will, uh, they'll take us through the session today. Towards the end, I'll also give you an idea about what the, um, what the education board are doing uh, in terms of the activities during this, uh, this COVID-19 period. So over to you, Jalal. Thanks. Thank you very much, Farsana, for your lovely, thoughtful, and inspirational insight here. Let's move on to introducing the panelists. So our first panelist is uh, Jenna Megan. Uh, she has actually studied or uh, her education is in early childhood education uh, from Canada. And she has, I, I, as you can see, over 10 plus years of uh, experience in teaching, mainly particularly in uh, uh, early years. Our next panelist has, it comes with a wealth of experience, 17 plus years in uh, different primary settings. And particularly what is key to, to see here is, is that she's got a lot of experience or she's a specialist in STEM and educa educational uh, inclusion specialist. So with, with that background or with that introduction, I pass it on to Dustin to take it over. Thank you very much, Alal. Um, thank you very much. So let's get started. Um, I'm so happy that there are so many of you that have joined us today because STEM is such an exciting area of learning and um, there are so many reasons why children should be uh, encouraged and um, supported to, to learn in these areas. So what, what is STEM? STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. And these are distinct subjects in themselves, which you all know, but it's not just about studying each subject separately, but as I've said here on the slide, about introducing 
knowledge through real world application and example. So bringing all of the skills that these um, subjects teach to be able to solve problems and, and think in a certain way, which um, Fazana referred to at the start. Jalal, next slide, please. So why is STEM learning so important? Um, STEM develops very vital skills, um, which include critical thinking, problem solving. Do excuse me, but I will refer to my notes because there is so much good information I want to share with you. Um, numerical analysis, mathematical reasoning, design, and a grasp of the scientific method. All of these are really, really vitally important skills. And as children go through their education, they are a fundamental part of education, which, which is great for them to be able to develop. STEM subjects drive change, and it is logical then that these are the leaders of the future. Um, you've, we've all seen change in technology over the last 30 years has been, the rate of change has been extremely rapid. From when I was a young girl to now, I, we've seen so many different changes from the introduction of email for the first time, you know, phones used to be big chunky bricks when I was a, when I was little, and now they're so you know tiny little slick things. This rate of change is going to continue for the next thirty years, and um, by giving our children an introduction into these areas, we're setting them up really well for the future. There will be a high demand for a workforce trained in STEM subjects. Um, because there is such a growth in this area, then there will be a high demand for, for the workforce. And also, um, there is a shortage of um, recruit. There is a sh recruitment shortage for uh, people joining these areas. So um, there are lots of jobs available in these areas and that's going to continue to grow in the future. Because non-STEM, because uh, graduates of STEM subjects have such critical skills, they're highly valued by employers in other industries as well. So not just science and engineering and technology, but in any other um, industries, journalism, um, anything else, these graduates are highly sought after and highly employable. So even if they don't continue to take these subjects on um, after at university or afterwards, the skills that they gain are, are priceless. Last of all, there's a shortage of um, females and minority ethnic groups in these areas. Um, and in, um, I read um, the Academy of Engineering's report yesterday when I was preparing for this, and they're stating that only 8% of, of the UK engineering force are women. Um, so you can see from that that there is a big shortage and there are many reasons for that shortage. but as we all know, girls are just as capable as boys and can do any of these jobs. So if they are interested in them, we should encourage their interest and allow them to you know, take that interest forward. And minority ethnic groups, only 6% make up the engineering workforce. So again, there's many reasons for that, but if your child's interested, then please encourage them and uh, support them. Okay, so don't worry then, STEM at primary level is really good fun. Uh, it's none of the kind of academic things that you think of when you think of STEM subjects. It's really fun and it's just creating a spark and allowing children to explore. You don't have to be an expert yourself. Um, parents might be worried that, uh, well, I've never studied science or I don't know much about technology. How do I support my child? You don't have to be an expert at all. Um, you can learn with your child. When the new curriculum came out in 2014, coding became part of that new curriculum. And just like parents are doing currently, teachers also had to learn. So we learned with the children. And in that same way, you'll, you'll be able to also learn with your children. Follow their interests and look things up together. That makes, that makes it all the more fun for them to know that you're also engaged and you're really interested in their, in their learning. Um, Lastly, this is a really difficult time. All of you are doing 
fantastically well to be able to work from home and also to teach your children. So the primary um, thing to think about is your well-being and your children's well-being. So do what you can, do what you find, do what you find enjoyable. Don't try and try and do too much. Um, and just, you know, be mindful that it's, it's a difficult time for everybody. So uh, don't, don't think that you have to do everything that they would be doing at school and doing all the subjects in a day. Uh, do what you can and make it manageable. Okay, thank you, Jalal. Next slide. So I believe I can uh, be, maybe perhaps uh, ask uh, Jenna to, uh, to to step in and uh, you know give a bit of bit of perspective on different areas of STEM, please. Yeah, let me let everybody. Um, so I'm just going to talk about the different areas of STEM today, and I just want to um, go back on what Thasima said that a lot of you probably don't realize that you're doing a lot of STEM teaching yourself um, on a day-to-day -day basis with your children and in your everyday lives. Um, and you're doing it without realizing. So this is just a little bit of a breakdown for you to see some of the um, ways that we can explain the different areas and the different ways that you can um, do activities at home with your child. So science um, is the way we think about the world around us. So we do this by observing, experimenting, um, we make predictions about how things work and we use questioning to further um, our knowledge. For technology, um, technology is often a term used to describe the use of an electronic device such as a tablet or a smartphone. However, in this instance, it's also using tools to identify how things work. So it's not necessarily an electronic device um, when we're talking about technology. Um, engineering is using a variety of materials to solve problems and building things that work. Maths, we can split into two different sections. So maths, there's number and there's shape, space, and measures. So this includes patterning, sequencing, the exploration of shapes, um, looking at volume and capacity, um, looking at weight, of different objects and also comparing objects by size. Next slide, please. So um, we just wanted to talk about what STEM looks like in the early years. And Tasim will also be talking about what it looks like in the primary years. Um, and we're gonna talk about this in different areas. Um, we put some pictures for you to see some examples of activities that can be done. Um, I know a lot of people wanted to know about activities that they can do at home. And I know right now in the current situation, it's quite difficult to source um, resources. So a lot of the activities mentioned and a lot of the things you will see can either be done by making things at home or with stuff that you already have in your house. So in science, um, science, science is split up into three different categories. So First, we talk about earth and space science. So that's learning about the earth, the oceans, out of space. Um, we have the different planets. Um, we also have um, the earth, the world, um, how, it, how it's formed with the different parts of the ocean, the land, the sea, and things like that. Dustin, if you wanna to add to this. Yeah, sure. So um, I was, I would like to just add that um, one of the resources I'll be talking about later on has got um, the stem.org website has the astronaut Tim Peake talking about space and life in a space station, which would be really interesting for lots of children. You can do simple experiments where you um, put a, a stick into the ground and observe the shadow, measure the shadow, see how it changes through, through the day. So go out every hour and measure the shadow and see how is the shadow changing? Um, when is it the longest? When is, the sh when is it the shortest? And what does that tell us? And then that links into so much learning about how our shadows formed. And um, you can also be very creative with this as well. You can um, create shadow puppets and make a shadow theater at home. You can uh, write a play script for your shadow puppets and uh, include other areas of learning and make your learning cross-curricular. 
there's there's so much you can do at home with with very little resource thanks jenna um so for life science is um life sciences we're discussing the um the study of living things so we're essentially talking about plants animals um, and different life cycles so that could be the life cycle of a chicken and an egg um one of a nice one of the nice examples for um younger children is the story of the very hungry caterpillar and you can discuss the life cycle of a butterfly um a lot a lot of the resources that are available for this um when we get to the resource section you will be able to see it and they're all free to be able to be printed online that's them. okay so um in the resource section there's um, a link for connie huck and she's she does live teaching of science lessons um, the bbc bite size also has um, science lessons available on there as well but at home you can um this of course links very easily to habitats um, to food webs um, and you can explore conservation as well through this habitats links to you know the lack of habitats or the shortages or um, the felling of trees and things like that. So it all it all really nicely links together. That again, you can link to how can we help the environment? You know, how can we look after our world? You could grow your own vegetables in your garden. It's very easy to do. You could, you know, my um, my family has started to grow garlic and carrots and and um, spring onions and those things are really really easily done and children will find that process of of looking after plants and growing things very valuable in their learning thank you um so for the physical sciences um this is observing natural forces and substances so um one of the nice activities that we've done um at home is very simple it's um baking soda vinegar and you don't need food coloring if you have it it's nice to see the different colors but you don't actually need it and it's about seeing the chemical reaction of those items um, so there's lots of um, activities that you can do that we're going to talk about um, a little bit further that you can do at home um, for physical sciences you're going to see one also about um, changing different um, colors of skittles later that's it um, just to add to that, so similarly, the baking soda and uh, vinegar, if you mix that in a bottle, put the two together in a bottle, and if you put a balloon on the end of the bottle, um, and then and before you start this experiment, ask the child, um, you know, what do you think is going to happen before you begin, make a prediction, and then mix the two, mix the two ingredients in the bottle, and you'll see that the balloon will start to inflate. Um, children love this, they find it fascinating, um, but then talk about, okay, what do you think is happening? Why is the balloon inflating? Leading on to talking about gases. Um, and then there was a question that somebody had asked about gifted and talented children. Well, this is perfect. STEM is perfect for children who are very talented in science or math uh, because it's, it's unlimited. You can go from one thing to the next and your learning will, will continue to grow. So. Um, making a project about uh, gases and their uses and um, you know solids liquids gases all of that doing research making a presentation to share with the family making a presentation to share online with your grandparents or something like that would be wonderful um, and it involves everyone in the learning thanks Jenna thanks thank you so um technology um technology in stem other than um, the typical electronic devices. It's more about using tools. So this is for developing fine and gross motor skills. Um, scissor skills are very important for children to have. And I know being a parent myself, um, it took me a while to actually let my son use scissors. Um, but there are safe ways of using scissors. Just make sure you um, supervise them when they are using them, especially at a young age. Some of the things you can do is draw different lines on paper and have them try and cut along those lines. Um, another activity is you can fill a bucket with water. Um, in your kitchen, I'm sure you have different sized jugs, containers, and the whole pouring, emptying, filling um, aspect of it um, will really help their 
um, motor skills. Um, using a spade to shovel wet and dry materials. So you can go outside in your garden if you have one. And if you don't have a garden, then you can simply make sand using um, flour and a bit of oil. And depending on how much oil you use in the flour, it will see if it's quite sticky or quite hard. Um, and this is also a nice way to mimic being at the beach where we can't go right now but we can build different things with that sand. And the children will very quickly learn that if the sand is quite dry, they're not gonna be able to um, build as well as if the sand was a little bit more wet. So it, that problem solving factor into it as well. Um, also just using a magnifying glass to observe um, leaves, bugs, different things in nature. I think it's important um, when we're talking about science to ensure that we don't instill a fear that we might have of certain bugs um, and certain things in nature into our children because they naturally like to explore um, and therefore they should be given the opportunity to explore without having um, those fears that we might have you know about spiders and different types of bugs. Tessie? Uh, just to add to that um, for primary age children as I mentioned previously Coding is now part of the curriculum for primary children. I know the um, Aga Khan Education Board is planning to do something around coding in the future, but um, we've included some links um, at the end of the PowerPoint, which will be shared with everybody. Um, and there are free coding tutorials available for children and for parents to work through with children. And they teach you step, step by step, stage by stage, how to do coding, how to build, um, a scene, how to play a game, and they start from the very basic, how to how to uh, create a sprite, to quite complex uh, things, which you would be very impressed with um, what the children manage to achieve when when they're, you know, given the kind of basics. Um, also, design and technology also includes um, using imagination and creativity to create a product. Um, an imaginary product, designing an advert for the product, uh, building a prototype of the product, and use that language as well. Um, use a prototype, use the, the, the correct language to teach the children. And maybe uh, then um, even create, creating a TV advert to sell their product. Persuasive language and reasoning, you know, why should somebody buy this product? Why is, why is it better than what, what exists already? Um, this again is cross-curricular and, and it's all part of STEM learning. Thanks, Jenna. So for um, engineering, um, some of the things that we can do is you could build a city out of blocks. Um, so you can use different Lego, um, Duplo, things like that, depending on your child's age. You can also design a tunnel um, and you can get a few different sized cars that you might have at home and you can work out what size does the tunnel need to be for this size car to fit? How can we change the size of the tunnel to make another car fit? Um, so we already talked about the sandcastle and engineering and technology in terms of doing um, has a lot of similar aspects as well. Um, use a variety of recyclable materials at home. Um, children love junk modeling. Um, so, you know, in your kitchen, when you, before you put boxes, empty cereal boxes into the recycling, save them, save your kitchen rolls, save empty water bottles and use them. And sometimes just putting those objects on the table with some glue or tape and just letting them use their imagination is enough for them to be able to create, create different um, objects. Tessie? Uh, so, again, um, using junk modeling as, as well for primary children, they, they love it. Even children in primary, even 11 year olds, they love junk modeling um, and they create some fabulous things with, with junk modeling. So, like Jenna said, keep all your um, kitchen rolls and, and cereal boxes and everything. Um, but using junk modeling to do STEM challenges. So, for example, um, how can you create uh, a system to protect a raw egg from breaking? How high can you drop the egg from? Now do this in the garden so you don't mess up the house. But how high can you drop it from? 
um, which materials work best to try and protect this egg from breaking. There are so many challenges like this, which children, as you can imagine, they totally love doing this. Um, and further on in the presentation, I'm sharing some, some STEM cards that you'll see, which um, give you these challenges. Another popular one is um, to create a bridge and to see what materials you need to make the bridge so that you can, you can hold a can of beans, for example, or the heaviest thing you can hold on your bridge, which material works best, which material doesn't work best. All of this is, um, is STEM thinking. Thank you. So for maths, um, maths has so many different aspects, um, but these are just some examples. Um, so sorting objects into different categories, such as size, color, or shape, so on the age of your child, um, you, can, you can be able to do this, distinguish this for them. So for example, if your child is very young and they're just learning about shapes, um, then you can, um, you can sort things by shape. If they're even younger, maybe like a year old and you're talking about color, have them do little scavenger hunts around the house where they run around and they look for something that's blue, something that's green. Um, and then you can move on to the shapes where, oh, what's a triangle? Can you bring me something that's a square? Um, things like that. Um, number or color patterns are good. Um, patterning is a really good skill for children. So something like you can see in the pictures where you just use beads, make different color patterns, start with two color patterns, and then you can move on to three color patterns. Um, measuring using different units of measure, such as cubes. So you can see in the picture the dinosaurs. Um, so when you're comparing height um, or length, you can talk about um, which one's bigger, which one's smaller. Um, the longest, the shortest, and you can use things like cubes um, to do that. If you don't have cubes at home, you can use anything. You can use Cheerios, you can use um, how many raisins tall is it. It doesn't really matter as long as you're using the same unit for um, all of them. And then you can just compare the different sizes. Um, another good maths activity at home, which you don't need anything, is help your, have your child help you set the table. So, you know, work out how many people are in the family. How many forks, how many knives, how many spoons, plates, things that you need. Um, also a good way to get your child to help. And um, they can also work out these different um, maths multiples too. Let's see. Uh, so maths in the primary, it's um, again, like uh, Jenna said, there are different aspects to it, but the most difficult for children is um, problem solving and that's the one that is STEM related so puzzles to do with uh, numbers, Sudoku, uh, any kind of mathematical reasoning for example the next shape in a sequence of shapes you can do also with older children but the next number in a sequence of numbers what you know finding the rule and then applying that rule all of that is mathematical uh, STEM thinking Logic problems and puzzles, there are lots of those available on the stem.org site, which we've shared uh, later on. Um, and puzzles where you have to find all the possibilities where uh, the child has to work systematically. Um, for example, there's a red t-shirt, green t-shirt, blue t-shirt, and there is a red pair of shorts, green pair of shorts, blue pair of shorts. How many different combinations can you find? Um, in, that, in that process, children need to, to be taught, but they learn how to, to think systematically and to work through an order in an orderly way, which is obviously a really valuable skill for them. Also, lastly, the, there's, a, there's a website called Enrich, um, which has amazing challenges uh, for children. And again, for any child that's particularly gifted, this site's got amazing challenges that even you know, adults would find difficult to do, but it also has answers, so there you go. Okay, so now um, I'm going to go through some resources to support you at home. Um, the first one, we've had lots of questions about resources, so I've, I've picked a few that I think are, that are particularly good. There is a large number, there's a wealth of resources out there. Um, don't feel overwhelmed, just explore maybe a couple at a time and see what you find is user friendly for you. But this first one, wonderopolis.org, um, it poses a question every day. 
for example, what is an ice quake? Um, so you would, you know, you would ask your child, you would encourage enthusiasm and excitement, you know, oh, have you ever heard of an ice quake? I've never heard of one. What do you think it is? Where in the world could we find them? Um, what do you think might cause them? What does it sound like? Could it be like an earthquake? I don't know. Let's, let's have a look. And then the site, um, if you, when you click into it, it provides you with further resources. So you've got um, explanations, you've got videos, you've got all kinds of things to help you with your understanding. And they also have a wonder wall, which a wonder wall of words, which uh, links to that question. So it gives you amazing vocabulary, which will be great for the child. You put it up on your um, fridge, put it up around your house, use that vocabulary in their sentences. Um, they need experience, they need at least 10 experiences of using the language before it becomes part of their vocabulary. So you have to uh, keep encouraging them to use the ones, the words they've never heard of before. Um, so again, it's cross curricular. And then there's a, a quiz on there as well. So it, it tests the child's understanding of that subject once you've you've had a real good play and and thought about it together so it's you know it's all good fun the next site um twinkle this is something that teachers use a lot and it has it has a wealth of knowledge on there and a wealth of uh material on there it's got um all the subjects and it goes all the way through the primary uh age group all the way from reception up to um year six and there are PowerPoints on there. There are um, things you can print out to uh, to play games on, um, loop cards, all kinds of different exciting things. So I, I recommend that you have a look. There are also the STEM challenge cards, which I spoke earlier about. Um, each one is a different one and they're all lots of fun with things you would have at home easily accessible to you. Thanks, Jalal. Can I have the next slide? Okay, so stem.org, this is um, a brilliant site for STEM. It's the largest provider of education and career support in STEM subjects. They have primary resources for home learning, especially for parents. Again, I've, I've put an image up there of some of their STEM um, questions and starter activities. So they're called starters for STEM activity cards and they provide a brilliant starting point. Um, but the links at the bottom, when you go online, they lead you into further printable resources and an explanation and the opportunity to explore further, to explore that topic further. Um, this site also has free coding tutorials, which are aimed at girls and boys. They are, um, they're sort of themed. So there's a Moana one, there's a Frozen one, there's all kinds of things that girls would enjoy doing and participating as well as boys. Um, and then there are lovely um, video clips of, of short STEM experiments that you can do at home. There's demonstrations on there. Um, so the volcano one, the balloon one that I spoke about before, all of that is, um, is on, this, on this website. There's also a, a little video of making ice cream at home, which is really great fun. And you can talk about reversible changes and irreversible changes through that process. The, the other one, Little Bins for Little Hands. Um, again, this has demonstrations of easy STEM experiments um, and there are videos on there and these items would all be available in the home as well. And as these images show, there are free science packs and STEM activity guides and all kinds of really interesting and fun things that are easy to find. So I would suggest having a really good look um, look on there as well. Next slide please, Jana. So this slide is about toys, engineering toys. Um, some of these you might already have at home. I'm sure that many people will have Lego at home, but things like Kinex and Meccano are specially tailored towards um, engineering. So Kinex has, comes with guides, teacher's guides and uh, lesson plans when you buy the kits so if um at any point it's good to know about these if you don't have them at home don't worry don't try and don't buy them specially but 
in the future, if you see that your child is really interested in engineering and you want to support their interest, then this is a really good um, a toy to, to invest in for them. But if you haven't got these things at home, then Lego is really great. Um, and so is junk modeling. So with Lego, you might, um, you might look at different structures around the world, um, take some pictures, print off some pictures um, and make a scrapbook and then let your child uh, make a replica of that model, take a picture of their replica to put into the scrapbook. Um, work with the child to create a profile page uh, of, the, of the structure, any interesting facts you can find and together create a really amazing book that you can share with the family. So there are so many fun things you can do together and all of that is sparking an interest and a, and a curiosity um, within STEM subjects. Thanks, Jala. Thank you very much, both of you. And uh, I believe this concludes uh, the presentation part of uh, the webinar. Uh, we will move on to questions. And these are questions that we have received as part of your uh, registration, what I mentioned uh, previously. And these have been collated and we'll uh, basically uh, the, the presentation as well as now moving on to uh, the questions were geared towards what we received uh, uh, input from, from all of you. So let's uh, uh, basically start with the first question of the day that we have here. Uh, a question goes like this, I, I don't have science equipment at home, what do I do? What practical activities can we do with things that are easily available at home? And I perhaps like, let's start, in, uh, let's, let me invite uh, the first uh, panelist, uh, uh, Jenna, to see what, uh, what's her perspective on that. So um, we did talk about um, a lot of the activities that we can do at home, but we've put together some additional ones. Can I have the next slide, please? Sure. Can you see it? Okay, I believe uh, there's probably a link, uh, uh, the, the internet connection issue, maybe perhaps, uh, Jenna, are you back? It's fine, I can see it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, I can see it. Your screen was frozen for um, a second. That's okay. Um, so the activity at the top you can see, if you look at the picture, is just putting paper and colored pencils by your door or a window. And you can just choose any toys um, that you have at home. and if you can see the shadows that are being caused by the light outside and then use the colored pencils to trace over the shadows. So that's a quite nice activity to um, lead into a conversation about shadows and how they work with different lights. Um, the other one is um, really fun too, it's putting Skittles. Um, it also works with colored m &Ms, and you put them in a circle on a plate um, and just in the middle you have your child pour some warm water in the, um, in the plate, and then you just watch the rainbow form. Um, you can put them in a circle, you can put them into different shapes, um, and you can experiment with um, the different combinations of colors. Um, next slide, please. Um, so these are some of the maths activities. Um, again, with a lot of stuff you have at home. So the first one, um, it's, it, this one is for um, children that are a little bit older, probably about going into reception, um, but you can ver very easily simplify this. So if you have a child who's about maybe two, you can start off by um, putting the spaghetti onto the play dough. You can use any type of dough that you have at home. And it's just Cheerios. And it's about using their fine motor skills to put the Cheerios um, on the spaghetti. And then you can, extend this activity for children that are a bit older by doing addition number sentences, which is what you see. Um, you can even do subtraction number sentences or anything like that. Um, the next picture you see is making shapes and it's just about using cotton buds to make the shapes. Um, and you can 
A nice way to extend this activity is for the little ones, they can make 2D shapes. You can use cotton buds or you can use um, toothpicks, but toothpicks are a little bit sharp. So just be aware of how old your children are. Um, a nice way to extend this is you can actually use the same things, add some Play-Doh and build it into 3D shapes um, for children who are a little bit older. Thank you. Wow, thank you. These are some exciting ideas. Uh, Tasleen, do you have anything further to add to this? Um, I think I, I mentioned it earlier about um, using the junk modeling to, to do some of the challenges, uh, like creating the tallest tower, creating a bridge that can hold a heavy, a heavy object. All of these things would be done with, with materials you have lying around at home and you wouldn't need to buy anything, anything for that. So um, it's about being creative. And um, if you use the resources we've provided here today and then be creative, um, I think you've got lots there to, to be able to do that at home. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, moving on to the second question. And question, question is, can you recommend TV programs, online streaming services or online resources and apps uh, that will help with STEM learning. And I guess, uh, once again, maybe because of uh, the specialty in early learnings, maybe we can start with Jenna once again. Um, so for this one, um, there are lots of, there are lots of TV programs that you can watch. There's lots of um, streaming services. Um, also apps, Dustin's gonna talk about um, some of these things. Um, one of them that I really like for the younger ones is the BBC Bite Size. Um, the nice thing about this one is that it's separated into different key stages. Um, there's lessons on there and there's also activities that go with the lessons. So it's quite a nice one and it's broken down into the different areas. Um, Tassim, do you want to add? Yeah, sure. So um, Jalal, if you I move to the next... Have, yeah, you have a slide for this, yes. Yeah, yeah please, thank you. Sure. So um, the Department for Education have um, recently released uh, resources for home education, which is um, the first link that's on this slide. Um, and they provide um, a whole host of uh, free resources that are invaluable at this time when everybody's at home. And they're also approved um, and come from highly reputable sources. So that would be the first um, port of call really. And then I've included some other um, sites on here where which I've used in the past with children and they're, they're really um, interesting. And you, if you explore them, you'll find that actually there's so much on there. But again, be careful not to be overwhelmed. Um, at the bottom here, there's curriculum mapped video resources. So BBC are teaching uh, live sessions. Um, so there are live lessons on there, which you can access for the children to learn at home with. Um, and the Oak Academy, I haven't put that one on there, but the Oak Academy um, are also um, giving live lessons as well at the moment, free of charge. So you can access maths lessons and science lessons uh, free of charge on there, which is uh, really useful at this time. I think Fazana wanted to add something here. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Tasleem, and I think, uh... For Sana, I believe, yeah, please go ahead, yeah. Thanks. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to, from the board's perspective, just give you a little bit of a um, 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 little bit of an idea of some of the resources that we're putting on the um, Head Start website. Um, you can see one of the links in in front of you. Um, this is this is the Learning at Home section where we have a number of resources and links to webinars that we've run previously. But in that section, we've actually also um, developed a, a STEM Learning at Home document, where um, we realise that a a lot of parents are sort of being overwhelmed with with lots of resources being thrown at them what we've tried to do is to just handpick some of these that either people have recommended to us or we've had experience with ourselves and just sort of categorize them a little bit um, giving you a little bit of an idea of what age groups they're suitable for as well so I would definitely encourage you to go to that website and in particular look at the uh, the stem document 
Um, and certainly some of the resources that you're seeing on this um, in this presentation as well we'll be adding that we'll be adding to that document and we'll also send all of these out to you as, as well after the webinar thanks Jalal thank you thank you okay moving on to the questions uh, let's uh, go over the next question here how can how can how can we support our children interest and build their confidence let's start with uh, Kathleen on this um okay so anything that you 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 show an interest in your child will naturally be um interested in further so you showing an interest in what they're learning about asking them questions about what they're learning giving them time to spend with you and this is this is a perfect opportunity for that where you can learn together and you can share together the things that they are learning at school or that is the, the work that's being set for them from their teachers at school um, ask them questions, engage in it with them. Um, they're probably able to teach you quite a bit um, if you let them. So encourage them also to ask questions, encourage them to find answers. Why is the sky blue? How do aeroplanes fly? You know, ask questions, look for answers together. If you have female children, if you've got girls at home, whatever um, they show an interest in, allow them to explore so let them play with non-traditional toys and grow their experience and their interest in whichever areas they want to provide them with lots of praise that will be very supportive for them but try if you can to make that praise specific so tell them exactly what it is that they've done well um, i'm really proud of you because i really love the way you did such and such well done for trying to do such and such well done for not giving up, you know, all of these things, but be very specific. In terms of confidence, um, start with things that are manageable and, and achievable for the child. So give them a challenge which you think, okay, it's slightly challenging, but they should be able to get there. Um, this experience of success will give them great confidence and pride in what they've done. And then you can lead them on to maybe more challenging things, um, experiences of of things that maybe they have to think a bit longer for or try a bit harder for. Um, so although I'm saying allow them to experience success, it's also really important that you allow them to experience struggle and also sometimes failure as well. That's really important because children need to be resilient, they need to learn that everything doesn't always come the first time and you have to keep trying and persevere. Perseverance is really important. Um, encouraging them to build a growth mindset is invaluable so a growth mindset now this is a big area in education at the moment and we could have a whole webinar on this one thing but just a brief synopsis of it growth mindset is all about um, allowing children to learn that if they're not good at something now it doesn't mean that they will not, never be good at it that our mind is a muscle and the more we exercise our mind the more that we can learn so um, trying new activities, trying things that they've never tried before, uh, be it knitting, sewing, cookery, anything, um, builds different pathways in the brain and it develops new skills. So teaching them that failing at something is actually fine, it's okay, it's how you deal with that. What are you going to do differently next time? How are you going to change it next time? Which part of it do you think wasn't, wasn't great? Um, and how can we modify things? So all of that conversation is really important with children. Um, so don't try and protect them from failing, let them fail, but support them and build, let them build on it. I hope that um, answers that question. Can I jump in very quickly on that? I, I just want to also reassure people that, um, you know, I myself am a scientist and, um, and we don't get things right first time. So we shouldn't expect our children to get, to get their scientific experiments and things right first time. Um, so that, that whole process of exploration is, is what also um, helps to build them. And the other bit of reassurance that I do want to kind of um, provide is that it's also okay for parents not to know the answer. Sometimes we have this feeling that we should actually, that we should know the answer to everything that our children ask us, but that's okay for you not to know and that you can actually go through an exploratory period with them to try and get to, to, to try and actually get to the answer. Thank you, Farzana. That was a good perspective. 
Thank you. Okay, moving on to next. Uh, can you suggest uh, what equipment and activities can be used to help with learning about human bodies? What home resourced experiments can be done that relate to biology and medicine? Perhaps, uh, Jenna, you can highlight something here? Yep. So for this one, um, so I'm going to have first... a slide for this. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So um, I'm going to first talk about from a young age. Um, and it's, it's really simple things like um, singing head, shoulders, knees and toes, different songs about the body. Um, it's about, you know, five little speckle frogs where you um, use your fingers and you practice like, you know, putting, putting each finger down when you're counting down the different um, frogs, things like that, where they use the different parts of their body and see how the different parts of their body works. Um, there's so many physical exercises that um, children do throwing cats. So we need to make sure that, we need to make sure that we um, give them all those opportunities. And we, sometimes I think we don't realize that we are teaching them these things without specifically saying, okay, we're learning about the human body. Um, when you're playing throwing and catching with your child from a very young age, um, you can talk about, oh, you know, when I when I throw something, how can I make it go any further? What can we do to, um, should we throw it over? Should we throw it under, things like that. Um, one of the activities you can see here um, is you can have your child lie down on a big piece of paper, trace their body and have them help you measure the different body parts. Um, there's so many, um, different aspects of learning in this activity so you know you've incorporated the literacy because you're going into labeling if they're too young to label you can still talk about the different words um, you can turn this into a maths activity too where you can measure um, are my hands um, bigger than my feet are my feet bigger than my hands how can we measure we can use non-standard units to be able to do that as well um, Tustin will talk about how to extend this a little bit further as your child um, gets a little bit older. So, um, using... So, um, you have a slide for this, yes, go ahead. Tustin. Just go, sorry, Jill, I'll just go back to the previous go one back, just okay. for a minute, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, when you're labeling, using actual scientific terminology to label for the prime, you know, for older children, um, locating the different organs within the body, put, you know, put pictures of the different organs, pin them up onto the body so the children get an idea of where everything is in the body. Um, another example is perhaps creating on those organs even, creating little flaps with a description of what each body part does and what their function is. So making this one activity um, extend to all the way up to um, key stage two and to year six is possible. Jalal, will you please move on to the next slide sure. for me? Thank you. Um, another way to learn about the human body is to play snap with body part names and um, images. Also extend this to the functions of the body part and their name. So you're playing snap like you, do, you know, with regular snap and the child has to say, what you've, you've got a description of the uh, function and the child has to tell you the name of that organ or the you have the name of the organ and if you get it, the organ's name and the description has to match up uh you know how to play snap i'm sure uh bingo <laughs> bingo but but adapting bingo to play it with um parts of the body and uh even the functions of the body Palmanism is the name of the of a matching game, which I've included an image there just so it's easier to see what it is. It's when you turn over two cards and if you get the same matching cards, then you win a point. So you would have the names of the body and the description of their um, function. And if you get the function and the name, then you get a point. So it's different ways of um, learning the functions and the names. Um, and Kim's game, it refers to this image with the duck where you have certain objects and then the child looks at that for a few, for a minute or say, and then you take away a couple and then the child has to tell you what you've taken away. So this is a memory game, but you can play this with, um, with uh, body part names and, and their functions. Now, min min oh, excuse me, 
mnemonics is a very um, useful way of remembering things and learning things. So for example, the, the example here, Mrs. Gren, is a mnemonic for learning the common attributes of all living things. So all living things move, they, they respire, they, uh, you know, they have sensitivity, growth, reproduction, excretion, nutrition. And it's um, these letters that are the start of each of these words. Uh, this can be extended to younger children when learning spellings. So learning, you know, for example, the spelling of um, said, the word said, Sally Ann is dancing, for example, or because um, big elephants can't always understand small elephants. This is a strategy that can be used for really basic things, but also quite complex things. Um, for example, you can even learn the names of the elements in the periodic table using this strategy and to demonstrate happy hector lives happy hector likes beans but could not obtain food and the start of each of those is hydrogen um hydrogen helium lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine so it's a really good way and um Research tells us that we remember things better and we remember them for longer when there's meaning attached to them. So that's why this works and, and is really effective. I've included at the bottom here some practical resources. There's um, an interactive simulation where you can look at different body parts, you can rotate different body parts. Um, so you don't need to buy a model of, of the human body, which was a question that we'd had. Um, you can use online resources, we're really lucky now. Um, to look at the heart, to rotate the heart, to see all the valves in the heart. And obviously this is um, great for secondary and A-level um, standard as well. Um, and then the BBC Bite Size, uh, as Jenna mentioned earlier, it's got, it's got a whole vast array of things and it, it's broken down into key stages, but it gives you videos to watch, quizzes and games relating to the human body. So it's a great, uh, great one to have a look at. Thank you, Jalal. Thank you the next much. slide, please. Sure. So just in terms of um, biology and medicine, obviously this medicine isn't, isn't a primary thing, thankfully, <laughs> but um, we do have experiments that, that can be done at home that relate to, to the body. So for example, the eggshell experiment, this is an experiment where you use an eggshell to represent teeth, Eggshells are made up largely of calcium and so are our teeth. So we can use the eggshell in place of, of teeth and you would place the eggshell, you would, you would wash the eggshell and then you would place it into different, um, so different liquids as this picture shows, um, Coca-Cola, water, you can try coffee and tea as well. But it was, and then you observe it really carefully, which is um, the science skills that we spoke about earlier very careful observation, uh, draw a picture of what you see, observe it maybe after half a day, after one whole day, and then the next day, draw three different pictures and um, write down a description of, of what you see happening. And, um, and then you can talk about with the children that um, you know, the Coca-Cola is particularly harmful to teeth and that's why we don't, we don't like to drink a lot of Coca-Cola, hopefully. Okay. Um, the, the celery experiment, this is really simple. You mix some water with food coloring and you put some cel celery stems into the um, mixture and you'll see that the, the stem, the liquid travels up the stem of the celery. And it just shows um, the children that just like in our, just like in the celery stem in our bodies, um, blood travels around in blood vessels in, this, in a similar way to this. And if you want to particularly focus on, on the um, body, then you can, with the children, make up like an obstacle course in the, in the garden or even in your living room, where the child would be the blood and the child would be traveling around the living room, going into the different organs and going through the, through the heart. So you can make this as easy and as complicated as you want, but it's all about using your your imagination. I hope that answers that question. Thank you, I'm sure, I'm sure it does. 
Thank you. If I can just quickly um, jump in with that, there's also activities that you can do in the um, in the kitchen as well to sort of um, you know add to cooking, for example, just to really to sort of get um, talk about how maybe chemical reactions are happening and some of these might be happening in our bodies, etc. Et as well. So you know, as you are as you are cooking and doing these kind of activities, that's, that's something that you can talk to children about. Um, I do, I know we have a couple more questions left, however, we have come to um, uh, the end of our hour. So Jalal, I'm just wondering if it's possible for you to go to the feedback poll slide. Um, what we will do with the questions that haven't been answered is we will address these um, later on by email. Um, if we can go ahead with the, uh, we'd just like to ask you for a little bit of feedback. Um, and um, I think, uh, that should appear on your screen in um, in a minute. So you should oh, have sorry. something appearing which just asks you two or three questions. It should uh, be on the screen. Um, and we're able to give us some feedback on how um, the presentation, how this um, webinar has been. That would be fantastic. Um, but just while you're doing that, um, uh, uh, Jalal, are you able to go back to the AKEB? Uh, slide and I can just uh, just one slide before before the feedback poll I just want to just I just highlight um, a couple of stem activities that we're doing as part of the board um, just uh, very weak in the next couple of days we will be um, launching our new um, coding club which is for primary age children for six to eleven year olds um, and so for that being advertised in the Al Saha, take the kids through a six um, six session course where they can actually learn some of the basics of programming and coding that they haven't actually for, for children that haven't experienced this before. Followed by um, a virtual fair, which um, is encouraging you as parents to actually work with your children on some kind of um, uh, STEM related activity, whether that's an experiment, that's a research. Project, anything that comes to mind um, and then we would like to have the opportunity opportunity to actually showcase that to um, uh, to other members of the Jamaat online um, so do email us on this email address that you can see here in front of you and then finally we also have um, a mission X program um, that we're doing it's um, uh, where where children can actually do a bunch of um, uh, STEM related and physical activities to do exactly what it says, train like an astronaut. Um, so that's uh, generally for sort of the, the eight to uh, 11 year old range, but, but can uh, cover people outside of that range. So if your child might be interested in that, do email us um, about that too. Um, so Jalal, I'll hand it back over to you. I think we have one more, um, one more slide to mention about future webinars. Sure, sure. So while the polls are coming in, I think uh, they are still being collected. I uh, just want to uh, briefly mention about the next uh, webinar that we have. Uh, we have our next webinar uh, on phonics and importance of reading. Uh, this, is, this will be held on uh, uh, May 3rd, which is basically next uh, Sunday, uh, the same usual time between two and three, uh, focusing on early years and key stage one. This will, this will be delivered by uh, Zara Boyd. And I would say like, you know, in interest of time, just like, you know, the, the, uh, you can see the link here to register yourself, try and reg register as uh, latest as like, you know, next uh, Friday or, or next Saturday. And I believe, uh, you know, let me see if I can uh, cut and paste this uh, in your, in the, in the chat box. So that way you can register right now uh, immediately because the registration is open at the moment. Uh, Yes, so you can you can you can basically go ahead and uh, register for for this as the next one. And I believe, uh, Farsana, do you have anything else to add before we conclude? I, you 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 muted. You you you're on mute, Farsana. Oh, sorry. Um, just a, that's it from me. Thank you very much to everyone. Please do reach out to us if there's anything uh, that we can do to um, uh, uh, to help. For their activities or uh, any concerns or questions that you may have and the board will do their very best to to help um, address those. Thank you very much. And I just want to say a thank you, big thank you to our panelists uh, for, for, you know, giving us this insightful, uh, uh, you know, 
information there. I'm sure like I, I feel like I've learned a lot from what I've gone through here. And I'm sure like all the parents would be wondering and wanting to make sure that, you know, they can just explore uh, the, the, uh, the, you know, reach of which uh, the, the, the resources which is provided, uh, you know, to take their you know, child's development uh, journey forward. So thank you, both of you. Thank you, Jenna, and thank you, Tasling, for your time. So thank you very much for your participation, everybody.